really liked how my Astra Militarum headquarters came out, so I wanted something similar. Same dimensions, but maybe with a little more detail here and there to be a matching item. One for me, and one for my opponent. The raw material, another good old empty box of wine. The cardboard is pretty dense, without being too thick, and gives you some nice big plain sections. I'm loath to cut up any of the larger boxes I have, as they are being kept in reserve in case I get another rent hike and have to move. I cut out the main areas I wanted to use, grabbed a sharpie, and began marking out where the windows would be. Using the same scale of 3 centimeters, acting as about 6 feet, I went with a horizontal line across the whole thing, 1.5 centimeters up from the bottom, and this line will be the window sill. The next horizontal line will mark where the window starts to curve upward and is 3.5 centimeters from the last line, and then an additional 2 centimeters up is where they'll meet and create the churchy arch, making the entire window a total of 5.5 centimeters high. Then, another line, 2.5 centimetres up, to be the next floor, and repeat these lines for all the other floors of the structure. Then I marked out a series of vertical lines, set at 3.5 centimetres of wall, and then 2 centimetres to be the window width, across the whole surface. I then started using my X-Acto knife to carefully cut out the shapes and then repeated this on the other square of cardboard to create the side of the building. I cut out several strips of chipboard, a little deeper than the depth of the wine box cardboard, and marked out two centimetre wide rectangles that I could then place in all of the windows to serve as the seal. Next up, I drew ragged lines on both sections of wall to illustrate where the wall collapsed making sure to cross a few windows, and when I was happy with the line, I snagged some scissors and just cut it away. I drew a line of Elmers on each sill and slotted them in. If I laid them flat to dry, the walls may settle, pushing the sills out of position, so I balanced them on what will become my floors, so that the window sills are all just hanging in the air and drying in peace. While they dried, I started cutting out 1.5 centimeter wide strips of wine box cardboard to be the pilasters, the raised columns projecting from the stretches of wall between the windows. I made one for the exterior, and unlike my previous piece, I am adding one on the interior, all centrally placed between the windows. And where they rise up through an area of damage, I trimmed them down, sometimes a little short, but sometimes I let them rise up and pass the damage before hacking off the top. This time, I added another thinner strip of chipboard down the exterior center of the pilasters as a nice little accent, and grabbed my tweezers and started dipping some Chenkao craft beads into glue and placed them in different positions from the previous project. Seeing as it can now stand up, let's take a look. So here we have the project so far. Already, this is looking... Nice! Nice, <laughs> <laughs> guys! Oh. Because the interior pilasters would cause a gap when I got round to applying the floor, and because cutting out small rectangles through the deep floor would be a real pain, I just added more wine box cardboard sections horizontally across between the pilasters to ensure a flush join. I placed them against the underside of the seals and glued them down. I hot glued the side of the building into place and then slotted in the rest of the chipboard, dropped the terrain onto the edge and started marking out the footprint of the ground floor. Once I had the sort of shape I liked, I grabbed the blade and cut a nice raggedy line with my knife. And then, adding my Saving Private Ryan Town of Ramel demolished floors cut from the IKEA packing material my display cabinet came in, I cut roughly similar shapes as to the ground floor and then hot glued both of them in place. Because I'm not adding structural columns this time, I ran an extra thick line of hot glue where the ceiling of each floor meets the walls, just to beef up the strength. Okay, time for another self-congratulatory ogle, because when you see terrain you're working on coming together, you just can't help but take 
a little pride in how it's going. Okay, to conceal the interior texture of the wine box cardboard, I broke out normal, all-purpose spackling paste. Then using a piece of chipboard like a spatula, I gathered a ridge of spackling and then smeared it into place. Working along the length of each piece, I then wetted my fingers and used my fingers to smooth it out. I applied the paste on the sides of the pilasters, around the interior of each window, and around the perimeter of the walls. Any stray chunks or blobs that ended up on the walls, I left in place. And then I started applying the same technique to all the interior exposed cardboard sections. Using my wire cutters, I cut out bits of old, normal drinking straws, bits of wire, bits of cut up cotton buds or q-tips, and lots and lots of little bits of thin wire which I used pliers to twist and turn. Once I had a nice pile, I started inserting all of this material into the exposed flooring to represent conduits and pipes, rebar, HVAC, and other material in the plenum space between the floor and the ceiling of the story below. This really creates a nice representation of the floor having been ripped apart as the structure collapsed. And again, it looks very close to the image I'd initially drawn inspiration from. Now, a squirt of black acrylic and a squirt of white acrylic and a big, nice pour of Mod Podge and I started with my big fat brush and dabbed the mixture all over, getting that nice stipple effect. It takes a while to get into all the nooks and crannies, and as you work, some spackling will come away, but as you continue, it'll stick to the walls and pilasters, adding further nice bits of texture. A couple of coats might be needed, and some touching up as well, as air bubbles pop and expose white. Then, with a smaller brush, getting the mixture into the packing material, wiggling around and examining from every angle to ensure all the visible cardboard gets covered along with the wires and the pipes. At this point, I left it to dry absolutely, totally. Now that everything is dry and rock solid, onto dry brushing with progressively lighter shades of gray, initially focusing on the sides of the pilasters and around the windows and on the domes, then a little lighter, but only on the edges, and then lighter still, and some frugal applications to seals and small areas of the corners and the tips of the beads. And finally, some dry brushing with mithril silver on the exposed rebar wire and piping hanging out of all those exposed floors. Now looking at this, I seriously need some flair. There's no one in your life that talks about your flair. You've got a wonderful flair today. It says so much about a person that they would ever even have the word flair in the vocabulary, let alone mandate it for their employees numerically that they must have 15 pieces of it. Okay, after watching Astartes, I took a look at Hell's Reach, but the contrast was too acute and I kind of gave up on it. Later, however, I got into watching girls react and their fun reaction fests to Warhammer stuff inspired me to give it another go with them. I really got into it and didn't realize the animation just leaps forward as you get deeper into it. Anyway, this scene popped into my brain. Aha, a nice row of imperial banners, raised high and hanging proud, despite the sorry state of the building upon which they are placed. In Illustrator, I placed an Aquila on a parchment texture background and printed them up on cardstock, dropped the page back in and printed them again. And of course, they came out on the same side, only the other way round. Crumple up the page and chuck it in the bin. So then I printed them again, flipped it the other way this time, and they came out backwards on the other side. <laughs> I printed them yet again and flipped the cardstock the right way and finally got a matching set of banners on the other side. Now, toothpicks were just too skinny to be the flagpoles, but then I remembered I have some wood barbecue skewers and these were perfect. I cut them to size and dragged them along some sandpaper, twirling them as I went to create nice rounded ends. As I learned from adding bullet holes to the headquarters, I knew I'd need to drill the walls. So I drilled a row, added the skewers to make sure they looked right, I glued them in position, and then painted them with leftover Mod Podge that I had darkened up. 
I applied a Prismacolor marker to the white exposed edges of the banners and added a thin strip of super glue along the upper edge. I blew on it to make it tacky and then pushed it into place. Okay, let's see what we've got. Now this came out nicely. I'm particularly happy with the white dry brushing rising from the upper curve of the windows and the banners look grand indeed. Finally, a bit more Girls React inspiration from their viewing of Guardsmen. I added some graffiti in honour of the titular character. What? <laughs> yep, yep, the right thing to do. Oh my lanta. Oh god, it's got teeth. It's got a lot of teeth. Stand like 14. And just painted it in using some cool red. And that evening, I was re-watching the classic Kurt Russell movie, Soldier the indoctrination monologue in the background of the heartwarming sweet childhood moment of the start of the movie really inspired me. A soldier shows no mercy. Mercy is weakness, and weakness is death. So I wrote it up and printed another little poster to add to the interior. Since I last watched Soldier, it was mentioned about some Easter eggs on his record, and I paused this time to take a look. Captain Ron? McCaffrey from Backdraft, Cash from Tango and Cash, Snake Pliskin, O'Neill from Stargate, McCready from The Thing, all of Kurt's best roles so far. That's really cool. So I took this terrain to my first game of 40k and in transit. Some of the flags came off. To ward against this happening again, I cut out small rectangles of cardboard, bent them over a skewer to get them into roughly the right shape, and gave them some Mod Podge, and once they were dry, I glued a third of the tab to the middle of the short end of the banner, let them dry, and then bent the rest of the cardboard over the skewer and glued the other end into place to create a much sturdier point of attachment. So here is another shattered imperial building to add to my terrain collection. Cue the epic soundtrack as we take a look. 